Hello and welcome to tutorial 172. Please subscribe to this video channel and also go to markplex.com and subscribe to the email list. Let me just uh, show you that. If you go to Markplex and then select free tutorials, in fact, all, all programs join Goldpass newsletter or services, but free tutorials is fine. And you just go down to this area here, just go to mailing list, sign up and uh, put in your email and your name if you like and uh, you should when you sub uh, subscribe receive an email asking if it's really you and you want to subscribe if you do you can just click and join the email list and then you'll be updated whenever i create a new tutorial program or quick tip or indeed any other news so today we're going to be looking at tutorial 172. Now I released a tutorial a few days ago, 171, which calculated the correlation coefficient between two data streams. Now that there's a standard function for that. The only thing is that doesn't necessarily work when you have two data streams where there are missing bars. You can see in this particular case, we have Agilant and you'll see that we have a few missing bars and when we look at those bars in the data if we, we go one bar back two bar, bars back three bars back it ignores the missing bars and just counts them as if they're all next to each other which of course has an effect on the correlation so what we did in tutorial 171 is calculate the correlation by if there was a, mi a missing bar then uh, ignoring the equivalent bar in data one until we got to a bar where there was on a date a data one and a data two and then for whatever the number was that we were using in our correlation calculation we would just put that number into an array and then calculation calculate the correlation coefficient between the array and we got a line like this only it wasn't quite like this because what we have now i've actually got two programs applied to this chart and one of them is the tutorial 171 but the other one is tutorial 172 now tutorial 172 doesn't need data 2 because it's actually using a psp of that data price series provider so we could if we wish to just have that on a chart without a data 2 at all and you'll see that uh, i'm not sure you can see the actual shape of that but it's uh, the same calculation same same shape of data that we're getting in the first example so let me uh, show you the program and just talk you through it what well, I'm, I'm not going to go through this in great detail because you can uh, probably get some detail from the video that i did for tutorial 171 but just to explain some of the differences between the two programs. So this new one, tutorial 172-correlation-psp, another catchy name. And uh, as we go down, you'll see that now we're actually using some of the TradeStation object extension. So this will not work in multi-chart. And uh, in particular, we made, we made a slight change to the date time. If you remember in the first program, we used the double date time which is entirely different from the date time class. And we're using the date time class in this case, which is a date time object. We've got two of those DT1 and DT2. And we're also using a price series provider that we're setting up for the symbol that we're going to um, now have as an input. You'll see here I've got it set up as a, a di in quotes and that's the same symbol we were using to demonstrate tutorial 171 and we're using minute bars and we're using the same data interval as the data on the chart as before we've set the first date to the first uh, bar on the chart and we've loaded the psp that's pretty standard for psp but what we we went on to do is to modify the program a little bit down here so we set dt1 this is the date time of data one using bar date time and bear in mind we're going through a counter here going through three counters actually value one value two and count and you'll 
see that in the first program, the tutorial 171 program. And then for data two, we're saying if there are sufficient bars in the PSP, then DT2 is equal to PSP.time.value2. So that is equivalent, if you remember the tutorial 171 program to this part of the program here where we calculated DT1 and DT2, but these were doubles. And what we're doing now, these are date times. So having done that, we can then do the same test, see if DT1 equals DT2. If it does, then we add the data close from, from data one to, the, to an array, but now to add the value from uh, what was data two, we now use psp.close value two in brackets, as opposed to in the original, we used uh, c, data, um, c value two square brackets of data two. And apart from that, the program is very similar. So again, all we've done, we've added the PSP and we changed the dates from the date time double to the date time class. And then we've got a little bit of a difference when we're adding the close value from the PSP as opposed to data two. Anyway, I hope you find this useful. Again, please go to markplex.com and subscribe to the email list and please subscribe to this video service.